I'd like to call to order the District of Chapman Council meeting. Uh, I'd like the opening statement read, please. As we gather today on the traditional territory of the Treaty 8 Nations to conduct the business of the District of Chetwin, we do so knowing that we are privileged to serve the citizens of this community and we shall endeavor to conduct our business in the best interest. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Prior to adoption of the agenda, is there any new business? Councillor? Yeah, I'd like to uh, write a letter of support to the um, Association of First Nations. Not hearing any adoption of the agenda. Not hearing any adoption of the agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion on the agenda? All those in favor? Carry. Minutes of the regular council meeting held on November 21st, 2022. Someone. Okay. Any omissions? Not seeing any. All those in favor? Carry. Move on to uh, delegations. Mike Bernier, MLA, Peace River South, to welcome the council. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you, Rich. I assume I stand here like this. Yeah, right by the bear. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And uh, you know, I just thought today would be a really important uh, time with the new council. I understand you already have one meeting. Uh, but I mostly want to come just to start off by saying congratulations. Uh, to all of you who uh, put your name forward, who uh, got on to council this time, some new faces on top of some, uh, I say, veteran rather than uh, old, uh, your worship. Um, but I really wanted to. That's one. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, start by saying that, and of course, I was saying to Councillor Bazanowski that uh, I told my wife as I'm heading out to Chapman just to say hello to the new council, uh, say a few words, and she said, well, uh, not only say hi to them for me, but more importantly, she said, make sure you stop the Dragon Palace for Chinese food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the best Chinese food in the Peace region. So I've already put my order in to pick up before I go home. Um, but with that, that also, I just also obviously want to start off, as I said, uh, saying thank you uh, for having me today. And welcome to also uh, say hi to all the staff that are here. Um, you know, I just wanted to uh, thank you, Your Worship, and uh, uh, former councillors and present ones, uh, new ones as well. Uh, for the relationship we have. It's really important, uh, obviously, as we're uh, trying to move forward to different issues in the peace region, that we have that close relationship which we have, which I can thank you for. I'll, I'll let you know what the priorities that are coming into my office right now, what I'm hearing uh, in the region, no surprise, I'll say the number one issue uh, is still healthcare. That's the main thing that's coming into my office. And by that, I mean, uh, the real shortage that we have with healthcare professionals, the stresses and challenges that are hitting our region, uh, specifically Chapman, uh, I think it is the number one challenge spot that we have in the South Peace right now, um, trying to retain uh, nurse, nurse practitioners, uh, LPNs, you know, the entire spectrum. Uh, but I have to always remember when we talk about the recruitment to really highlight the retention aspect and thank the present uh, people that we have working in the profession in our region. Uh, I've gone and toured and met with many of the uh, different professionals that we have here in Chapman. And you know, I want to thank them for the work they do. I, I know and I've seen firsthand uh, the stress that they're under doing everything they can to not shut down the hospital to go into diversion. You know, when I've, had, when I've seen firsthand uh, family members coming to the hospital to babysit kids so people can work a double shift. 
you know, we shouldn't have to do that, but I want to thank them for that because if they weren't doing that extra, uh, we'd be on diversion even more. And so we, we should always remind ourselves of that. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to highlight less necessarily social media, but when I see some of the negative comments on social media, you know, we really need to push back in the sense of saying, you know, it's not fair when we're adding further stress and burden to our healthcare professionals who are already going the extra mile. Uh, for us in this region. Uh, but with that, uh, we need to do better, not them, but the system. We need to figure out how to, to fill those positions to alleviate some of that pressure and stress. So uh, we've been doing what we can as an opposition to bring uh, attention to that. Uh, you know that I've been out there meeting with the nurses union, with municipalities as well, trying to bring attention to this uh, issue. The government is aware of it. I, I wish I could say it was only Chuck because then it would be a lot easier to say we're being cut down. But it's really right across Northern BC, frankly, the province right now, uh, a shortage in this field. Um, but for us, you know, we want to focus on home. So we need to figure out how to, how to fill that void. Uh, I won't go into much detail there unless there's time for questions afterwards, uh, Your Worship. Uh, the other one I wanted to highlight, uh, in case you haven't heard, was just a few days ago, I've now been uh, moved from critic for housing to the critic for forestry, which to me uh, is something I'm really excited about. I've talked to Kevin Falcon, our leader. The housing file was, even though it can be considered a provincial issue, affordability and housing was really, in all fairness, a lower mainland issue. And so it's really in our past to have, have somebody from the lower mainland taking on that role. So I've taken on forestry, which is something I was really wanting to do uh, because that also brings in the caribou issue, the hunting issues, uh, all the backcountry usage. Uh, that's also all part of the forestry portfolio, which is a lot closer to home for me and people in this region. Uh, unfortunately, as the critic, you don't get, you're not part of the decision making, uh, but at least I can be somebody banging the drum uh, in Victoria uh, in that official capacity now uh, with the ministry, uh, trying to hold them to account and bringing our concerns um, into Victoria. So we just finished session. Uh, as you know, there's a new premier, a uh, new cabinet just sworn in here just last week. So we're in, they're in a little bit of a honeymoon stage. Uh, I'm not here to be uh, hyper-partisan on any side, just to acknowledge, you know, we do have different players at the table uh, and there will be a learning curve for many, uh, but our next election is not geared for, unless a snap election is called again, it's not for another two years, so we'll see how all that unfolds. We'll be getting ready for a new budget and throne speech, which is usually early February, which is when I'll be back down in Victoria for six months. Uh, but excited to be in the region for the next uh, six weeks anyway, uh, with friends, family, and give me the opportunity to come up and say hi and congrats to all of you. So I wish you a Merry Christmas. I uh, really didn't want to say much more than just come out, uh, see the whites of the eyes and the smiles uh, and uh, wish you a Merry Christmas and again, looking forward to working with you uh, in the coming years uh, with you as a new council. And with that, I'd love your worship. Thank you and open to questions if that's the commission. Yep, thank you. Uh, any councillors have uh, any questions for uh, MO? It's not a question, but I just want to congratulate you on your, your new position as well. What was it, Shadow? Shadow uh, Ministry for Forestry. Congratulations. Thank you, yes. And as we know, if I can just quickly say, um, forestry is so important to this community. Uh, so one of the things I'll be able to do, not only as the MLA, uh, local MLA, but now as the official critic, I'm uh, looking forward to building those relationships in that sector as well, because I need to hear those, what's working and not working to make sure uh, that gets, that message gets down here for you. Yeah, I'd uh, like to give the opportunity to staff if uh, staff has any questions for MLA. It's an opportunity right now. You know where to find me. That's the easy yep. thing, right? That's the fun part. Yep, I see any. So uh, thank you, Mike. And I have one uh, uh, reference to the drum. Now it's not a not a connotation of uh, saying that uh, we are uh, not on the Indigenous land, which we uh, highlighted in our statement, but it is something that we uh, are prevalent in doing throughout our uh, council and as mayor that we do have uh, the land that we do uh, side on is that 
It is uh, truly a glamp, and everyone in this province, in this country, are now aware that uh, the wrongs and the rights that we have to uh, deal with. But thank you for that, Mike, and we do know where your office is, so we will uh, give you a call. And uh, thank you for coming to congratulate the councillors and the mayor. And uh, we have a new CAO. I think you uh, you're aware of that. So, <laughs> so there you go. Hey, thanks, Mike. Yeah, there's lots of staff changes and CAOs around the southeast right now. So congratulations there as well. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank you, Mike. And uh, our next uh, guest is uh, Leonard Hebert. Uh, He's the chair of uh, our Peace River Regional District. Introduce yourself, Leonard. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm Leonard Hebert. I'm here on behalf of the Regional District as I get to know you kind of a, a night. Again, my day on my life prior to me just said. Uh, I'm Leonard Hebert. I'm the chair of the Peace River Regional District as of November 10th of this year. Uh, I do know some seasoned faces, and I also met the new ones at our orientation. Uh, on my speech to becoming the chair, one of the things that I really highlighted was relationships and I, uh, I thought we would have had a conversation with the MLA prior to this because it will sound fairly similar but we didn't meet each other until we got here today. So uh, relationships are very important to me uh, in supporting each other and you know when your worship comes to the regional district table, he's supportive, he has questions, he has concerns and he brings them through in a way that sometimes um, not all of us see through different eyes. There's 12 people at the board, and each of us have a different view as to how things work. And when we can all sit down at one table and come to a, an agreement as to how um, things should move forward, uh, it's good to see. Um, I'm here to reach out that, you know, we're very supportive of what Chaplin's been doing in the past. Um, the things that have been come in front of the board uh, regarding support for Chetwin on different issues. Um, I know Director Rose and the mayor are very close and doing a lot of this stuff, so I just kind of get to see whenever all of our work is done, that's when we get to see it. So there is an awesome relationship between the electoral area director and the mayor and council, I believe. And I just want to support that relationship. There is um, there's a lot of good work being done. There's a lot of positive coming out of that. And I believe that myself as chair, I should be supporting those relationships. And I'm coming here to say that we, I, I as chair will definitely support that going forward. And again, if there's any questions for me, I'm hoping I can answer them. Uh, your worship, I'll talk to you. Okay, thank you, uh, Leonard. Uh, any questions for uh, the chair? The Peace Server Review. Uh, thank you, Leonard, for that. And uh, the PRRD and uh, Chatwin, uh, not only Dan Rose, uh, the relationship uh, we do have with the PRRD, uh, not uh, just from myself, but from prior may mayors and from uh, residents from around Chatwin uh, that sat in the Dan Rose's uh, position. So uh, we had uh, quite a good relationship prior to me and prior to Dan. So we're just continuing that. And the PRD and uh, Dan Rose uh, do well for Chapman, but we could do better. So that's what the stride is for, is to make sure that we have that opportunity for each other to progress in a way that we're doing better and better and better. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, continuing uh, bylaws. District of Chetwin Fire Protection and Life Safety Regulations Bylaw number 1151-2022 requires first, second, and third readings. I believe the Councillor uh, Deck. Um, I was wondering if we could um, postpone this. There's There's been a, a small wording change that um, some of the um, firemen have asked for it and I, I don't think they realize the implications of them. There's some fairly strong implications just on one word. There has been some changes made, but there's some fairly strong strong implications as per the lawyer that 
for this one word they want to change. And um, I think that they're, they're having a meeting tonight after this at 7 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that should be run by them and see if they want to put themselves in the position that that one single word can can put them in. Uh, if, if that's okay. If not, we can vote on it. I, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking that to uh, adopt that file, although I read through it and it, it's exactly what we need to have, we really need to make sure the public's got enough time to go over the paperwork, understand the documents, and uh, not feel like we're rushing it past in the public, including uh, the Firewoods Association, because they are our volunteers. And uh, I think they need to be satisfied before we have third reading adopted. So, uh, what do you propose, uh, Councillor uh, Deck? We, we postpone the, the first, second, and third reading till till out till the next uh, council meeting, and, uh, and and they have a they have a chance to understand the implications of the wording they want to change tonight at the meeting. I'll start. Discussion. Um, if they're adjusting some of the wording, there is something in here that I did find um, when under Part Nine Fireworks too. Um, it says no person shall possess unless they have a permit. At which I'm, that has huge implications for the members of the community too, as that hasn't been in past bylaw to have a permit prior to possession. Councillor McDonald, I believe our chief had uh, addressed that in our last uh, meeting. Yeah, chief, did you uh, have, go ahead, uh, grab a mic there, uh, chief. So the, the intent of that wording is that um, it limits people without, so civilians just going buying fireworks without having uh, a permit. So they can come and apply for a permit for a special use but then it's, it limits the times that if they can purchase it and fire it within the non-allotted areas that like we're looking at Halloween and then um, New Year's Eve, that, that window there, um, because that way it ensures that we're not having people purchasing fireworks and be in possession of them for Canada Day and then having people setting them off when we have a higher fire rating around the community as well as it's a safety issue as well as um, for personal injury as well as property um, uh, protection as well. So <clears throat> the Canadian Fire Chiefs Association is actually moving uh, forward with a, a federal proposition that is showing that they're looking at prohibiting um, consumers purchasing fireworks at all because of the um, safety factor for injuries as well as property conservation because people are not using fireworks, you know, in an appropriate manner or during appropriate times. So I'm not sure if that answers it. it just gives us leeway within our legislation to say that you, you're not allowed to have this unless you have permission um, within that window that you're allowed to um, sell them, right? So. Thank you very much. Yeah, my question was basically that the intention was to have permit for possession. And so if the intention is that, then that's great. And thank you for the behind the scenes on it as well. Okay, any more discussion? I know that was off the topic of uh, deferral, but so we're going to uh, give the information back to uh, the association and uh, January 9th is our next meeting. Is that sufficient enough time? If, if, if we deem what, what we hear back from uh, the, uh, the association and uh, others, we will continue to uh, go through the third reading in our next meeting. Okay, all those in favor? Deferral. Okay. Bylaw, bylaw, District of Chetland Parks and Public Place Amendment Bylaw, 1153-2022, requires adoption. Councillors? 
second. Councilor McDonald. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Bylaw District of Chetland Solid Waste Collection and Disposal Service Bylaw Number 1154 2022 requires adoption. So moved. Councillor Councillor Deck. Second. Second. Councillor Bezendowski. Discussion. All those in, all those in favor? Carried. <clears throat> Moving on to committee reports and liaison. Any reports, Councillor? Councillor Nelson, go ahead. Okay, that's fine. No, no, I'm moving here. Okay, so I have a library update. Um, attended my first library board meeting. And the update on the bistro is that they have renewed their contracts uh, for the current location for another year. Um, the owner of the bistro, Pam England, she has been, she gave us an update what she's doing over there. She's actually doing some really incredible things, which I think are pretty noteworthy. She is feeding uh, the Windrum students about 40 people breakfast three times a week uh, out of her own pocket because she has been talking to the teachers and they're telling her that these kids aren't eating properly. So she's making sure the days are starting off properly for those kids. Uh, they're in a gingerbread house competition um, and it was judged today. And if you were in the library any time recently, you would have seen some spectacular gingerbread houses. Um, Pam England is also working on donations of progresses, male formal attire for a free shopping day for grads uh, come January. So this is for um, basically people who need to save some money and still want to really be suited up for grad. Donations can be dropped off at the bistro really any time now, between now and January. Um, moving on to the library. So the library hosted a seniors dinner on December the 6th. I think quite a few of us were there. It was it was fun. I think there was around 120 senior citizens, uh, volunteers from all over, from the high school, Tansy, Westmold, Rec Center, Visitor Center. Um, we we served, we brought, we gave presents, and it was just generally uplifting for our senior citizens. And what I didn't really realize, because it was my first time attending this event, is that it's actually a really exciting and uh, it's an exciting event that the seniors are looking forward to. And I think the library does a great job with that. Um, moving on to the new library project, our exciting and expensive library. Uh, they were planning on having it to lock up by year end, uh, which means the interior heat will be installed and the building will start to be warm. The crate is in place and they say it's gonna take about nine more months for completion. Dan Rose says that's optimistic. Uh, the design plan can have a 40% contingency, is what I was told. And currently, the PR RD is asking for an 11% shortfall. Uh, he, Dan Rose also said that he'd be happy to come speak to council, and I suggest that that was probably a good idea. But we'll move on to something less political than that. The Senior Citizens Housing Society. Uh, updates. The financial audit is complete. There's one vacancy at Square's Place, one at Little Prairie, even. Um, the staff is very short staffed, and I'm just telling you that so everybody can. If you know people who enjoy working with seniors, uh, they think that they're posting for a good job BC, and it, it's worth it to send some good people there because uh, they definitely need more staff. Um, let's see here. Oh, they, they paid for their uh, seniors at their um, facilities to attend the luncheon of the library, so that was kind of special. They have installed taller toilets at Sorrera's Place, which actually sounds pretty exciting. Um, they, let's see what else here. That their Sorrera's Place is not welcoming visitors. They're only allowed one visitor at this time. Uh, they have to be fully masked, so they're still dealing with some COVID protocols. And, they also have had a bit of a discussion, which may come across our table here in the future, 
uh, talking about lawn maintenance, which they really struggled with, and potentially partnering with the district. Uh, and then, of course, the other side of lawn maintenance is snow removal. So that's a conversation that hopefully we can have later on. Um, but the rare things, but Chetman seems to be doing quite well there. Thank heaven for seniors because uh, we'll all be there one day. Well, maybe that's today. <laughs> hey, thank you for that, Julia. It's uh, very uh, informative. And uh, yeah, the dinner was great. I uh, attended and uh, all the seniors have fun uh, getting out of their uh, dorms at the senior center and uh, in town when they do come up to visit with us and uh, have turkey and uh, uh, BS with uh, the rest of us. Uh, thank you for that. Is for the the mayor and the PRRD of uh, the PRRD. Uh, they uh, said yes to our uh, mural over at the rec center, so we're uh, very pleased with that. That we will get it done with the arts council. So we uh, that's some of the stuff that uh, the PRD and uh, uh, our uh, district Dan Rose he uh, champions that, and so do I. And then uh, all we do is. Uh, give it to them. They had a few questions on maintenance, and then, uh, so we answered that, and everything's a go. So uh, it's uh, it's awesome that we get to do that because of the record breaking and uh, Guinness uh, world record, I guess now. So we're, we're there. So very, very good stuff. And uh, on another point, uh, the district of Chatwin uh, 2022 service awards, uh, five-year uh, service award. Uh, were John Holt, Ellen Hill, Chris, Crystal Hilton, and the 10 year were Benjamin Fry and Linda Kearns. The 15 year staff, Marvella McKinnon, and the 20 year was David Lajeunesse, and the 30 year were Tyra Plamondon. And I have a 25 year certificate of uh, what he called <laughs> it is pulling for Lenora. Thank you very much, Lenora. <laughs> yeah. Did we want a picture? Let's get a picture. I, I like it seems like it's really important 25 years. But anyway, uh, get your camera out, Steve. Yeah. Service boards in uh, at the uh, it's in the great bank, thanks. <laughs> but anyway, when, when we had we're in the uh, at the Concord Hall, it was very good. We had dinner and uh, we get to meet uh, some of the firemen and then some of the new uh, fire recruits. So I got to talk with them, it was very entertaining to give me the insight of uh, how they got to Chapman. Uh, some came from Ontario. They came for they looked for it uh, in, in Kona or uh, housing and they looked at the price and they uh, said, Well, got this uh, million dollar price with uh, the same wage I'll get in uh, other communities. And then, uh, then they looked around and he says, They knew they wanted to come west from Ontario. So they happened to start looking and then own this job in uh, Chapman. This particular one was. Uh, West Racer, so so culture, a couple of workers, and they they came to Chapman because of the price and because they wanted to come up west. And one wants to get into hunting, so it's in Ontario, they went to London or near London, Ontario. And what they did was they said it would take a long time to go uh, uh, to either get a <laughs> license because everyone. Everybody needs a license, so to hunt. If they want to do that, then they have to take a couple hours to go to the to wherever to go hunting. So they just said that that's not uh, possible. So what they did uh, when they looked at Chapman Chief here in Chapman, you could be ten minutes. I said, yeah, well, some of the restrictions are uh, you have to be uh, five five hundred meters from a, a road, and then that's you become a legal hunter. And as long as you have your uh, 
we were licensed and purchased. So anyway, they said, well, this is just great. It's something that uh, we were looking forward to. And uh, coming from Ontario, the weather was different than anybody that lived in Ontario or uh, moved to Ontario. Finds that the uh, humidity around the Great Lakes is a little bit different than our cold here. Our cold here, 20, 20, 24, and 30 degrees the other uh, day, way different with the sunshine. The only time we kind of beautiful is when the wind blows. But here we are, we've got the, the possibility of two, not just one, two particles, right? Have that to check the oil. And then there, there was a third one that uh, leads uh, the other two for a cat one One uh, electrician and one the HR. So uh, they also were looking at this job this job thing on one of the job sites, the headbutting sites, and uh, it's a big challenge. Again, for the opportunities to be outside and the opportunities of uh, affordable housing. And then that's when the housing came up. I said, we need uh, something to come in that's uh, invest in, to build housing, to make sure that we have affordable housing in our community. Affordable, affordable meaning what you could afford, not affordable by meaning this or this, right? We, we need the affordable housing, somebody come in and build, build us a few houses so that you have a choice. If you want to renovate, we've got houses for that. If you want to be able to move into a turnkey place, we should be able to have that opportunity. It should be just like any other community where we have that kind of opportunity. Right now, we don't. And I'm looking forward to the next year where we will have some of that. Hopefully, uh, optimistic and uh, all the smile, uh, talking about uh, which one? She's, she went back up. She's in, uh, yeah. yeah, she's So it, it's, uh, you have, you have, you need the opportunity to come to Chapman and be able to find the opportunities of housing and work and affordability. One of the things that uh, I myself was uh, looking, looking towards was when industry comes to town, like our coastal gas and the TC energy that we, I should have been advocating, advocating saying that we need more than just yourself and a paycheck and to pass through and then put, put gas and go through a pipeline and be done. So we should have been more affordable and uh, asking for, or more aggressive than asking to for the housing. And we should have been doing that right at the start before they put the shovel in the ground. That should have been one of the priorities in, in our, in my, uh, my opinion, that's what I should have been advocating for. That was four, four years ago when I sat here, and to, still today I talk about that. It's one of my misses that I should have been on as a uh, as, uh, advocate for challenge. So with that opportunity to <laughs> say a few words, I'd like to call up Mara and 25 years anywhere, anywhere to work for anybody, what a great accomplishment. And some of the accomplishments that we have that prove that uh, Lenora, great worker, and it must say something about where we live to have people uh, like Lenora in the 30 year that they come here to work and to stay and to play. And it's very important to me, important to council, and important to other residents of Chapman that we have people like you. Thank you very much for the for that for your service. Like, we appreciate that. Thank you. I think we're So, any more reports? If not, the adoption of the reports as given. Okay, discussion items. We don't have any uh, correspondence. We have three items. Motion to receive C1 
two and three. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carry. Informa information items. I want to I-24, anything in there that uh, councilors deem to be lifted? Motion to receive I-24. One to I one I Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carry. No reports to action, reports for information. November accounts payable. I'll make that recommendation that the check register for the month of November 2022 totaling $877,956.70 be received. Councillor Smith, Councillor McDonald, seconds. Any discussion? Not seeing any. All those in favor? Okay. New business, Councillor Deck. Um, I would like to, uh, and the council can decide if they wish to or not, all depends on your opinion, I guess. Um, I would like to have a letter of support written to the Association of First Nations Chiefs in the request that the federal government stock targeting hunters, First Nations, farmers, and law-abiding citizens who use firearms responsibly while, while failing to address the country's issues with illegal gun, gun violence. This all pertains to Bill C-71, and there's, it, it's taken a, a hard turn from what was, was uh, initially posted, and the, the Association of First Nations is um, basically demanding that they stop and have a closer look at what they're doing as opposed to just wantonly. I don't, my personal opinion only, I don't think they uh, they know what they're, they're talking about or looking at. They have to have somebody who really knows what they're talking about in order to be having such a wanton um, um, uh, making guns illegal, basically is what it boils down to. Discussion? You want to uh, second or I guess we should and then uh, let's discuss. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll start the discussion with uh, the fact that uh, if we support and send letters of this, uh, should we uh, get one drafted up and then uh, have a look at it? Making sure that we're in the legal stance so that we're not uh, putting ourselves in a position of uh, uh, one side or the other. If, if it's support, then it is one. So maybe we should uh, get a letter drafted up. Uh, maybe uh, I'll put that in the hands of our CAO and uh, get us a letter drafted. And uh, is it okay if we get it sent to each one of the councillors to have a look at? Councillor Deck? Works for me. I'll draft one up and I'll have our lawyers take a quick look at it and then I'll send it around my email to the council and the mayor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that uh, it's support, right? Yeah. Okay. That's what we're voting on. Yeah. I don't think I'm opposed to it. I, I share your opinion. Um, I'm not sure if I'm for it or against it. I gotta digest that a little bit. I'm not sure if this is out of the scope of uh, mayor and council of the district of Chetwin. Um, I've always seen ourselves as a visionary of our community and a service provider to our citizens. Um, like I said, I gotta digest that a little bit, but I'm wondering if it wouldn't be more effective if it didn't come from a peace region, uh, regional district, um, representing all of the Peace River area rather than just the district of Chetland, though. And, and I, I, I agree with you 100% there, Clay, but it's, it's got to start somewhere. It, it's um, it, it's a, 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 such a whole different ballgame as opposed to down in Vancouver or something like that, as, a, as opposed to up here. It's just, 
I, it's got to start somewhere, whether we run it through the Peace River Regional District or whatever. I just think the support has to be there. It is where you're coming from, Councillor Deck, the, the right to bear arms for the use of uh, hunting your own food. That's where you're coming from, is that right? Um, it, it, when it boils down to it, yes, but they, they, they've, um, um, they've painted a lot of guns with the same brush and it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be, the, the law was, uh, what they were voting on, there was amendments added on in, in, in short notice that disqualified a lot of hunting rifles and shotguns and target guns and just general purpose firearms that aren't, uh, aren't a military assault rifle and so on and so forth. They just they put, put on a whole bunch of stuff and it just didn't seem like they, they knew what they were talking about because it disqualified so many guns that are such common for, for people that use them for, for hunting and, and farmers and First Nations and, and, and so on. And, and that's, that's what the big squawk is on that whole thing. It's not, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So we're going to take a look at the letter and then vote on it after that. Is that where we are? I believe we're going to vote on the letter, but we're going to have the letter given to us prior to uh, sending out. But we're going to vote on the letter unless somebody makes an amendment. Any more discussion? Okay, in favor of supporting, sending a letter of support. Carry. At this time, is there any public questions? Any media questions? Good. One question, I just wanted to thank Council Mayor for uh, pointing Bell with us for the Shepherd Communication Society. Ms. Bell is coming, he has said yes to everything. Uh, on a serious note, Bell is very really helpful. Uh, and we got him for good advice. And I really appreciate the team having that seat at the table. So thank you. And you are? Marlon, sorry. I'm yep. the advice from the Shepherd Communication Society. Yep, thank you very much, Marlon. I you know it's the people out there that we uh, we uh, get asked questions about. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep, and uh, thank you, Mel, uh, for those. Uh... Okay, with that said, uh, adjournment. Okay, we are adjourned.